and welcome to Faith, Final Drafts, and The F Word. I'm Darla Phillips, a host and producer, along with fellow screenwriters Sarah Hopkins and Rebecca Williams Spindler. Join us as we share our experiences navigating careers in film and television. Add in the twists that we're women of faith entering into life's second season, and you might find yourself mumbling under your breath. Good luck with that, ladies. Mm. Follow along for some guaranteed laughs and some valuable screenwriting and industry perspective. Anyone with a dream will enjoy this podcast video. Hope you join in. And remember, we got to enjoy the journey. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to this new episode of Faith Final Drafts and the F Word. Thank you so much for all of you that have subscribed and have watched um, our other episodes. We are so thankful, thankful to you, and we're hoping that our message um, t- touches each and every one of you in one shape, way, or form. So, and thank you for the comments. We've had some great comments. So yeah, people, it's resonating. So, thank you for that. <laughs> right, and so we are also on Facebook now. So look us up on Facebook. Um, you know, Spotify, all the other yeah, Google, Google Podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Um, yeah, so we're we're out there. Yeah, and we're still coming to you from Wisconsin. So today we are in Milwaukee, <gasps> Third Ward downtown. <laughs> all right, so um. Today, we're going to be discussing inspiration, you know, as artists and, and writers and creatives, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? And we are also going to start off with our F yeah. word. So um, I'll go first. So um, for me, the F word represents film. So um, I'm also a, a producer of short films. And so a short film that I wrote, that's a quirky, cosmic, sci-fi comedy called Son of the Seed. I just found out literally a week ago that it was accepted at the uh, Gold Standard Art Film Festival in New York City. So it's debuting in New York on April 30th, so I'm pretty pretty psyched about that. And that makes Film Festival number eight. That's amazing. I know every time you share that on social media, I see all those little, the The laurels. It's like so exciting. It's so cool. Yes. So what's your effort? Oh, okay. So, well, I'm... So I'm going to go with faith. I have something totally different I was going to talk about for my faith moment. But this morning, an amazing thing happened. Um, So, I mean, to me, you guys probably think that's amazing. Everything's amazing. But it's a tender mercy. My husband and I have done a lot of missionary work in our church. We had um, gotten really close to two girls from China who were going to Marquette um, for college. Um, then they went home after they graduated. But we were able to keep in touch, and I knew they were fine. But for whatever reason, during COVID, I lost contact with them. They could, they weren't on Facebook, and they were, their we chat members were not available. So all this time, I don't know. I'm like, I have no idea what's been going on with them. So this morning, like, I got a text, a Facebook message from one of the girls who is in China. Um, letting me know she's okay, she's safe, and how much she loves and misses us, and how much you never know that you make these contacts with people, and you serve people, and you love people, um, and I just felt like that was a relationship that I thought I would never get to reconnect with, and it was such a sweet moment, and we, ah, so made me so happy. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. That made your heart feel good. Yes, that's yeah. my little faith moment. Um, then I was going to do, I guess... I guess I was going to do a final draft moment. I mean, I guess <laughs> I'm working on a script, and that's all I can say about that. <laughs> it's coming. I'm writing a comedy. We talked about this comedy feature. And the exciting thing for me, and I think we talked about this, we all have things that come natural to us. And um, you want to call it, I call it tragic comedy. It comes natural to me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even I don't I know if that's a real genre. genre. It's not a genre. I don't think it is. I created a new genre. Tragic comedy. <laughs> that flows well with me, but let's call it dramedy. I don't know. That's my final. Well, yeah. a really good comedy mm-hmm. does make you laugh and cry, so. Yes. It's true. Yeah. It's a little bit but tragic. tragic? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Comically um, tragic. Comically tragic. Yeah. And, um, and then frustration. I don't know. I think we'll get into... I don't know, I think I've talked enough about my F words or some frustration, <laughs> but I'm going to wait and maybe they'll come out in our topic. So, all right. Nice. So, okay, my three Fs. First of all, I'm super excited to be back with you girls again. Yes. So this podcast has been quite the experience for us. Like we're getting, 
to know each other better because we're having to do so much dialogue about this and it's really yeah. brought up a lot of insecurities for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I should never speak ever again. Oh, full, sen never. full sentences don't happen well for me. <laughs> now, this whole thing started with writing and you know the final drafts of whatever we're trying to create. And so my three Fs, I'm starting with my final drafts because I finished yes. the script that I had started, you know, gosh, I got the IP for it. Last October and I had six months to finish it and we got her done and it's with the producer right now and I'm so excited and it was um, it was a really huge experience for me because I worked very closely with the author and that makes a whole that's a whole nother voice that you have to incorporate and yes. so it was an incredible incredibly difficult script to write but it was very it, like it, it felt so good in my heart to know that I worked so closely with the author mm -hmm. to try to get her voice in there and really make sure that if there was things that she was bumping on that I would fix mm -hmm. and so that was kind of my second F word I fixed I did lots of fixing <laughs> lots of fixing <laughs> happens um, but no that it feels really good to have you know this this thing that you know the goal of completing a script completing a script is hard yes and no. you know when you're writing something and you, you don't know if it's really landing and you, you start questioning all mm -hmm. of the things and so yeah so that was you know final drafts of anything is a huge thing whether yes. that's a short whether that's just an article whether it's a full script like you got it done so mm -hmm. I'm in that whole like I don't know if you can see the glow behind me. Maybe, maybe it's the beer sign. <laughs> but it, it feels really good to have that finished. So I'm super stoked. And you guys were so awesome at being so supportive and as writers. You need you need your tribe to help get you through the dark days of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never attempted everything I've ever done. So, page 157. Yes. Oh, and it was a really long script at first. <laughs> got it done. I mean, that's exciting. It is important to know that if you reach, if you put a personal goal out there for yourself and you reach that goal, then you should take a moment to yes. pat yourself on the back. So inspiration, um, where do you get your inspiration from? So that's what we're going to kind of discuss today. Um, is it something that's, you know, internal? Is it something external? Is it something you've experienced? Um, inspiration can come from many, many sources. And then, you know, we're going to kind of lead this discussion to another aspect of is the inspiration planted on you from the Holy Spirit or from the Father himself that he he found a message for you and he wants you to be the messenger. So we'll get to that too. Yeah. So, you know, where are these different avenues that your inspiration can come from? Is it from family? Is it from love? Is it from relationships? Is it from your career, your occupation? Does it involve humor? Does it involve <laughs> rage? Um, All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> Have you experienced something very rare and very special that really planted something on you? A birth, a death, an accident, a health diagnosis, a particular survival challenge. Those are all wonderful sources of inspiration too, um, you know, good, bad, or otherwise. So for me, where do I get my inspiration from? Well, I have a really huge, crazy, big, diverse family, and so it's an endless amount of inspiration of stories and themes from them. So family, complex love, community, I'm really, you know, um, I'm a townie. I'm still living in the same town that I was born in umpteen decades ago. So. You touch on so many of the places like birth and death and anything that's hard or happy. And we get so much inspiration from that. Um, and I think, though, for me, a lot of inspiration comes from not just the Holy Spirit or, or God. Okay, and this is where it's going to get weird. <laughs> it comes from people that have passed. People that have passed on, I feel inspiration from people that have passed to the other side. So, spirits? So, anyway, yes. we won't get into that too much. I mean, or we could, but. Right? <laughs> no, seriously, because, yeah. you know, um, my aunt dabbles in genealogy and she kind of texts me or sends me letters and lets me know about great, great, great uncle so and so or whatever. So, there is something to be said for that, mm -hmm. you know, that some people believe that in your previous life or whatever you want to call it, there was a story that was brewing there yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah, it I never came to fruition. But oh. now you in this particular mm -hmm. life are being fed that story so it can come to fruition oh, maybe. from someone that, could be. that has passed. Or moved mm -hmm. yeah. So there is 
Yeah. Oh, I just there are writers like that. Well, I feel like they're um, just obviously the people that I think that are passed on. They still love us and they still care about us. One big inspiration for me was my previous career. So I spent almost 20 years in healthcare, and one of the things that I did um, with the hospital that I worked for uh, was be a patient and family advocate. So my job was to work closely with patients and families that were on critical care journeys. Mm -hmm. um, pediatric complexities, cancer, oncology, transplant. And something about transplant really drew me in with these patient stories. I mean, there's three different patient stories. There's the person that's waiting for the, the organ. They're on the waiting list. There's the person that who's, who's received the organ, and now they feel that they are going through this custodian role of you know honoring the person that donated it. And then there's the, the family of the person who has passed and making that decision to, mm -hmm. to donate their organs. And then the one other story that people don't talk about is the staff, mm -hmm. the medical staff mm -hmm. that helps all three of those families deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so I just got so inspired that I, I wrote a one-hour mm -hmm. medical supernatural pilot about that journey. It's called Stay List. And so I just felt like this story needed to be told and from these four different angles. And it, it stayed with me to this day. And whether anything happens with it or not, I don't really care, but I was just so inspired that I needed to put that down. It's funny because I remember back how many years ago when you pitched it to us, mm -hmm. that idea, and I felt the same thing. Like it felt like an inspired, such an inspired story to tell and mm -hmm. so much, um, so much content and so many, like you're saying, so many angles you could tell that story from. So I. So many points of view. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think that's storytelling at its core, right? Is yeah. you know usually yes, we have a protagonist in the story or whatever, but it's the points of view of everybody in that story mm -hmm. that helps the beautiful puzzle get put together. And yes. seeing all of that, that's one of the reasons that you know TV is such a great medium in that. Mm -hmm. Like you get to not only just you know, if you're reading a book, you just read it, and you have your own you know version of what that looks like. But when you get to see it on the screen or you see all those different points of view. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. And yeah. definitely inspired me. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you have an inspiration to tell a story, you don't want it to fall just on one path. So it's not just a story of loss. It's a story mm -hmm. of loss and hope mm -hmm. and longing and wishful thinking and dedication and you know uh, all these different things. And when you're writing something, you don't want it to be stamped with just one word. It should cover a lot of different words. Mm -hmm. That makes it more interesting for the next person to pick up, especially when you're pitching it. You know, you just want, oh, it's, a, it's about a family that does funny things. And <laughs> there's a lot of families that do funny things. What else do they do? Yeah. So don't just say it's just funny. Yeah. Come up with different words. Just just describe it. Right, right. So, yes, now we're going to turn that corner and talk about, you know, have you ever experienced an inspiration that's been brought to you from on high? Um, have you received a sign from God or a different sign from your faith that inspired you to write about it? Mm -hmm. Let's go first. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start. I was going to write a script. Well, actually, a manuscript years ago called. Um, it's called. I started out with May's story, but the whole point of that story, the whole inspiration came from a dream. I had a dream, a very oh my gosh, one of those dreams that you have mm -hmm. and it stays with you for a long time. Um, and I still am figuring out there was a strong message that I needed to learn from it. I don't know if anyone else will ever see it because the manager's not calling me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a story that I needed, obviously, to write and figure out what that message was, um, work through it. Um, so I think, yeah, that was one instance that I had where, yeah, that whole script was inspired by a dream. And it, was it one of those things where it was just totally beckoning you and you couldn't ignore it? That you just had to write it? Yes. That whatever you did to try to ignore it was like fruitless. Like, yeah. I have to write it. Oh yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, because it even got me writing a manuscript, which I had already decided I wasn't gonna, I'd already written a screenplay. I'm like, I'm never writing a manuscript again. Like really in a rut, you know, like rejection city and mm -hmm. no one's answering their emails and all of this kind of stuff. And when you feel like you just want to throw in the towel yeah. and be like, what am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. There always yeah. seems to be somewhere, some sign that says, mm, yeah, okay. stay on the path. Yeah. I want to put you here for a reason. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. I was going to say one thing before, because I know, Sarah, you're, you're got to, we got to get to your inspiration. <laughs> but so you were talking about how I, 
I didn't talk about my frustration for the week because I felt like it would come up in our yeah. conversation, <laughs> and it did, because <laughs> I was having a week like that, just kind of like, you know, I'm just going to throw in the towel, you know, <laughs> and not that things aren't happening, they are, but you just get tired, and you start, the reality of it really sinks in sometimes of trying to make this happen, what we're trying to do, and I was kind of feeling that way, and, um, and that was that little message this morning from a little girl from China, and she was so Aww. cute, and she, and she was like, you're going to be a famous writer, editor, and director, oh, and then she oh, sent oh, me a little cool. um, fortune in, like, a Chinese fortune, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, like, so we need those yes. little, and I feel like that, like I said, that whole thing this morning was a gift that gave me that special feeling to keep going. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is such a long game, and, and it is hard when you're like, oh, okay, nothing's happening, I keep doing the right things, yeah. like, again, we always come back to that, you know, like in the military, you you make rank, you do the protocols, you do the things, you write the scripts, you whatever, yeah. thinking that this is going to get you the next thing. And this is just not that kind of journey. Everybody's is different. You never know. There's no, there's no formula for it. Right. And that can be really frustrating. Yeah. Really frustrating when you're putting all of this time and effort into the stream and you're like, really, God, is this still what I'm supposed to do? Like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I feel that way, yes. even though sometimes I feel very strongly. But there's still sometimes I'm like, really? Like, I don't want to waste my time here if I'm supposed to be doing something else yeah. and I totally can relate to that and I feel like anybody that's a writer whether or not you're yeah. faithful or not I feel like that's something that everybody probably deals yeah. with and that's normal yeah so, that's very normal you know <laughs> it's yeah, normal to yes. feel that way and this is why you have people <laughs> you're like what am I doing they're like it's okay you guys okay. so I have an analogy on getting here today so it, it's 40 some degrees in Wisconsin and it's rainy and parts of the interstate to get here were foggy. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving and the windshield or wipers are on high and you can barely see maybe, you know, 20 feet in front of your car and just like, you know, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm getting there. And then when you call <laughs> me, are you on your way? That was the sign. And then when I saw you waiting for me outside, <laughs> like, it made it all work. All work. <laughs> it did. So, you know, as, as crazy as the road gets in front of you and if the fog is deeper some days than others, you know, keep going, keep going. Yeah. You might have to slow down a little bit here and there because I think there are signs that are telling us to do that. I agree well. with that. Yes. So that's something else, yeah. uh, you know, again, everybody's like, just keep going. But that doesn't mean put all your eggs in one basket. Like we're here to, this is a part of your life. This isn't your life. And sometimes it's hard to lose sight of that a little bit, especially if you're under a time crunch or you're like, you know, I have these goals that I wanted to hit by a certain date or a time or a year or something yeah. like that. And, you know, this is not one of those things you can put those out there and try to hit them. But it's it's so arbitrary. Mm -hmm. This is just an arbitrary business. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it can be difficult. Yeah. Well, I think that's why it's important that we follow these instincts or these feelings mm -hmm. because it could be very empty if, mm -hmm. if we didn't feel a purpose behind what we're doing mm -hmm. or that confirmation that, that – um, the Lord's on our side, or that our people that are past are on our side. Do you guys, and I don't know if this is just me, but do you guys like pray about the things you're going to be writing? As a ghostwriter, I have a client and I'm writing her novel, helping her write her novel, and it's very heavy personal content. This particular mom did have the worst devastating tra tragedy that you could ever imagine happen in her life. And so there are moments when I am reading this and helping her reconstruct it and I do take a break and I actually put on the Jesus radio channel whatever it is family life yeah. radio because I need to have that extra boost that I'm on the right path and he yeah. did you know match me with her and he put me here for a purpose mm -hmm. so I do mm -hmm. I pray yes. in the middle yeah maybe not so much at the beginning but in the middle when it's really sick yeah. I do pray yeah I, I, I was just, it. yeah, same thing. Um, and, and it's weird, especially like I had that opportunity of doing adaptations. So you're doing somebody else's work. Mm -hmm. You're adapting something in your own voice while trying to incorporate theirs and their story. And it's, it, it can be difficult because there's some things that you might not agree with in the story or whatever, or even, even just content wise. And, you know, before I took on either one of those, and they're both very different styles of you know, scripts very much. One's a pilot of, you know, YA, sci-fi, and the other one is full-on drama. So very different points of view, very different stories. And it's like, okay, like, what am, what am I supposed to be doing with this? And some of it is 
you know, my practice has just been like, keep going, like you're yeah. moving towards something. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to keep going. And the other part of that is, you know, one for them, one for you, one mm. for them, one for you. So I've been doing the one for them. Now it's time for the one for me now. And that's the, that's the stuff that I'm getting really excited about because that's going to be my own personal voice yes. and my inspiration. What, what story do I want to be telling right now? Yeah. Instead of trying to Build a, build a career and you know which is part of what this is too you know mm-hmm. you're you're constantly it's not necessarily a compromise it's just more s- strategy yeah. and yeah. and this is a kind of a weird career because everybody's strategy is different yeah. and not every strategy works for everybody so yeah. it can be really difficult to figure yeah. out what what the next thing is supposed to be when yeah. you're like okay I want to write this thing for me is this what I'm feeling prompted to do or should I be doing this this other thing that's going to hopefully get me to that place where I can tell my story or my story, yes. story might have more value now because I've done this other thing oh, yeah. so it's it's it, yeah, it's kind of convoluted in a weird way which no. is why we probably are like what why are we supposed to die? <laughs> well yeah, yeah. Especially because of the, at the age that we're doing it. Yes. <laughs> we're like I only have how many years left? No. <laughs> and, and, and it kind of negates some of the earlier steps that you would normally take right. yeah. in mm-hmm. this process. I'm like, I've got 20 years to do that. <laughs> you know, we have to kind of hop in and try to make it work right. where we're at. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So in Madison, there's a, this really historic hotel called the Concourse Hotel. Mm-hmm. And when you walk in the front lobby, there's two sets of staircases that take you up to the grand ballroom. So there's a left staircase and a right staircase. And so I picture us as the person in the lobby. This staircase is the stories that we want to write and, you know, feel inspired to write. But then this staircase is the the stories that our manager or someone that we've met, producer, whoever, name it, wants us to write Mm -hmm. that feels that we can sell. Mm -hmm. And then because... Of the age that we're at, we're looking at the elevator. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I skip the stairs, I just take the elevator That's to awesome. the top, yeah. and just get there already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'll do whatever you want me to do yeah. and write what I want to write, but I just want the express. Yeah. 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 Well, there's, there's no express, but I do. Get, <laughs> but there is different paths, and I, I think I leave. I just read something that Lee Jessup put out last week about this exact. She blogged mm-hmm. about it. It kind of hurts a little because you're like, oh, yeah. But I'm, but it really clears up. Like, oh yeah, our avenue is different than a 20 year old. It's different than a 25 year old. It's different than a 35 year old. Right. <laughs> but we still gotta learn our way. And um, and I do think that that's why I think the inspiration plays into that a lot. It can guide us, direct us, help us know where to put our time and effort, where not to. And I do depend on that so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing we have is being older. I think we recognize the we yeah. recognize we have wisdom, we have discernment, mm-hmm. and I think we are old enough to recognize those promptings. Mm-hmm. Where yes. when we were younger, mm-hmm. we may not have, you know. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that is it is interesting talking a little bit about that because even like if you're coming in as a new writer, you know, sometimes you feel like I don't know anything, <laughs> but like you have intuition. Like trust your intuition, yeah. maybe, and, mm-hmm. and trust that you've been on this planet. You know, for us, yeah. it's over for you. So yeah, yeah, we, over. <laughs> we, we've learned a lot of things. So don't discount the things that you've learned in other areas of your life just because you're starting something new in a writing life. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, and just because you're younger, don't think that you can just, you know, take the speedster motorcycle <laughs> on, the, on your way to the top and then look at us like we're driving the covered wagon. That's not how it is. <laughs> uh, no. Know, we have... <laughs> speedy stories and racy stories and all that kind yeah. of stuff you know don't typecast us just because no. you think yeah. Yeah. we were you just know, <laughs> before, we before you got yeah. here and maybe we should talk about that a little bit because hmm. we so we're like what this podcast what, that we're doing i really feel like we are carving out a space for women like us because we we were like where do we fit I mean, where do we fit? We don't fit anywhere. (laughs) And so I do feel like we're carving a space out. And so that's why when, oh my goodness, when I get uh, compliments on our podcast or um, views and I see that, or I hear that it's resonating, I feel like, okay, there are, there is a space for us. And Mm -hmm. and, um, so I feel like a little bit of the inspiration behind this whole adventure we're doing is to find um, people maybe like us find their voice, find that their voice matters. And, and that's yeah, what absolutely. makes me excited when I hear some of the feedback, like um, a couple 
like a lot of phone calls since we've done this. <laughs> I feel like I'm busy all the time. But my phone is ringing a lot. <laughs> and but it's exciting because it's like women who are like, I'm inspired. Like I want to go do something. I want to go create something. Um, and my answer to all of them is go, go do it. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if a single person looks at it. Who cares? Right. Do it because it's from inside you, it's creative, it's something special to you, and, and maybe it's just a documentation mm -hmm. of your life. And, um, or a moment in your life. Yes. Yeah. Like, who knows? Tomorrow I might be like, you know what? <laughs> maybe this isn't for me. But I still have... We're not going to let her do that. <laughs> no. No, no, definitely not doing that. But I guess that's what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. Like, there's... And we've talked about this often. You know, you have different seasons of your life when you're going to have doors of opportunity open or windows of time open, and sometimes those are two very different things. Um, but yeah, you, it's it's worth trying this. And if you're feeling inspired, that comes from someplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And follow your inspiration for a hot minute. But it's worth just like trying it out. If you're feeling inspired to do something, just try it. What's it? What is it going to hurt you? Yeah. You know. And so. Okay. Unless it's drugs. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. <laughs> but I, so I have a lot of ancestors who kept journals and I laugh because I'm like, who did they think? Obviously we, they didn't know we were going to care about those journals. They just wrote in those journals. <laughs> no, thinking nobody on earth would ever read those journals. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, and then they pass on and they've been dead a while. And guess what? We care about those journals. Um, I think of scripture, think of those prophets writing, they weren't doing it for money. They weren't doing it for fame. They were doing it for inspiration. Yes, yeah, something that they felt from God, God put upon them to do. And so I think that's kind of, I don't know, this whole creative process is gets gets me excited when I think about, you know, yeah, we're doing something that we feel inspired about. And whether it's this podcast or the stories we write, mm -hmm. um, I feel like every time you ladies share a concept with me, I can feel the inspiration behind those concepts. And and even if you're writing in that, when you're doing adaptation, I still feel like you're putting I did. It your was, inspiration it was a, into right. that. Yeah. And, and picking that and choosing that and how that whole yeah. thing came to me, you know, like it was, it was a really cool experience where I was mm -hmm. like, well, this, this is, it wasn't just this arbitrary, oh, you know, here's an opportunity, I have to take it. Yeah. It was very much like a, a thought out thing. And I think that's one of the things when people get started in this writing, like, oh, I gotta get everything out. I gotta, blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. And if, if you're doing that and, and something's not working, it's probably because you're really not processing. You're really, you know, in, in my place, I'm like, I'm gonna pray about it. I'm like, oh, you know, is this really the path you want me to go down? I'm like, shut that door. It doesn't need to be open right now, kind of thing. Or, and, and with any project, I'm like, so, so what if I wrote the script? But if this isn't something for you, like, then, then let it go. And I'm okay with that. Before be we turned the camera on, we actually talked about confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think confidence and inspiration are, you have to have one to have the other. Mm -hmm. Because if you are inspired to do something, but you lack the confidence to follow through on that inspiration, mm -hmm. then it does just, poof, it just, it goes, just goes away. Yeah. But and it's you, easy to get your confidence shaken in this business. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Really easy. Oh, yeah. But then you have to, you know, trust in yourself and stand by that story because you are inspired to write that story mm -hmm. from one way yeah. or another. Mm -hmm. So stand by it, stand up for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't let your confidence waver, and it's easy to let our confidence oh, waver. Yeah. It's easy to just say, throw in that towel. Yeah. Well, I think we are. Uh, we're either the most insane or the most inspired, <laughs> which it is. But I truly think we. Yeah, well, it's inspiration. I think because we've experienced so many things in life, mm -hmm. the inspiration is hard to shut off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think there should be like a week that goes by that I'm not inspired by something. Yeah. Something. Oh, so there's always stories. I'm always shocked how much more there is because you know how you, you've written these stories, these concepts, you're like, okay, how could I possibly be inspired for anything else? But it's always amazing to me that no, the inspiration never ends. Like, you know what I always get inspired? And I'm supposed to be writing something oh, else. Yeah. And right. sometimes you just have to get that out on a piece of paper and then you refocus. Yeah. Is, yeah. The inspiration, um, just as amazing that it keeps coming as long as you are willing and open to it. And yep. I think that's a big part of it is mm -hmm. you have to be open to it. Mm -hmm. It's a flash of light that's so bright that you can't ignore it. A flash of light? Like you have flashes of light? <laughs> I, I have people in my head. I have voices. Oh. We're going to go deep here. I have people coming to me well. in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. Like, that just goes to show you. You can have different, yeah, it's different spectrum mm -hmm. of how you're inspired. Mm -hmm. you know, Yesterday, just, it was 
a heavy day for mm -hmm. my family. And it wasn't so much as a flash of light as it was a candle flicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and it, mm -hmm. the intensity of the inspiration, if you will, okay. yeah. could be as bright as a flash of light that ding, or it can be a yeah, small cool. flicker of a flame. Just something mm -hmm. that captures your attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes it's just a little thing that never goes away, like the, the concepts and the ideas that, like you said, with the stay list, it's still there, even though it was four years ago or however long ago you pitched it or told us about it, it's still there. And I, that's how all these concepts I have, it's like the ones that are still, they, the ones that stick. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, there's still some. And there's a, it, they evolve too. Like think of how when you originally started, you know that project and what it has evolved into with all of the different people and notes yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like it's a process. So what might have felt like that initial inspiration, sometimes is just the beginning and then right. it evolves and and it's cool to see how all that happens. And sometimes it gets to a place where you're like, I don't even know what this is anymore. <laughs> I know, Was I really I supposed to write this? Why do you think we are inspired? Like, do you? Who cares on the other side? I mean, why do we get these inspirations to write things? Like, do you think we're gonna? Is there somebody in the world that needs to hear it, or is there? I think my my answer to that is two prongs. I think one is like God has given everybody each a gift and many mm -hmm. gifts in some way. So like, it took me a long time yes. to even think that I haven't had a gift of writing. Mm -hmm. yes. Obviously, I can't speak in complete sentences, <laughs> so maybe writing is a better option for me. <laughs> I <feel that> <laughs> Um, and then the second thing is, is and this is the surprising thing for me, was it's the community that you build within that dream or mm -hmm. that gift. Mm -hmm. And for I was surprised because everybody said, oh, writing is such a solitary thing. And I was like, good. <laughs> I love all my people. Don't get me wrong. Like, I can do this one thing. But it's been so cool for me, you know, to to make friends and have all of these people in your life and be able to give back to this community. I've had... Um, so many opportunities to engage with other veteran writers. Like that's so cool. I, I it's it's been awesome yeah. going through you know two different fellowships and just engaging with other people that are in the stream that you've had a similar backstory. Mm -hmm. Or for, like for us, it's our it's our our faith mm -hmm. life and yeah. being you know faithful people. That was kind of like what our building block mm -hmm. was on with that community yeah. part. But it, like and when you have community, you help each other out. Yeah. Like, look how much we've helped each other out. Like, you guys have been awesome yeah, in huge. so many ways, helping helping me as a writer, helping me as a mom. Like, your perspective of being an empty nester and you just having one launch, to, yeah. you know, like, I'm preparing you. <laughs> just helping everything. Yeah. Just like somebody that's writing that's a little farther down the, the road from you. Like, there's always somebody that's going to be ahead of you and there's always somebody that's going to be a little couple be minutes behind you. And, you know, you will kind of all rise together and trying to figure out how you can help other people and other people help you. Mm -hmm. That's the part that was really surprising to me because, yeah. you know, yeah. if you did it in a vacuum, how is how is that? And again, this mm -hmm. is part of our faith life where we're like, mm -hmm. we're called to be engaged. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's just with a project. Sometimes it's with the people in the project. So I agree with that 100%. Have yeah. you guys... And, 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 and granted, you're supposed to have positive thinking and put all the good things in the universe, but I have a really huge piece in my heart. If nothing is ever made that I've ever written, <laughs> I mean, if nothing ever happens with it, I have a piece that I'm okay with. That. Mm -hmm. like yeah. It's, a, it's yes. a weird thing. Do I want that? Am I striving for it? Am I doing what I need to do to try to advance this career right now? Yes, of course. I'm trying to do all of the things, but I have a, a piece in my heart that if nothing happens with it. I'm good. That's I'm good. And I think that's because we make sure we take care of the very important things, our children and, mm -hmm. and spouses and our parents and yeah. our community, the people we help. I feel like when you have a balanced life, yeah, we're taking care of the most important things. And, and, and yes, if the writing goes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and if we are making money, yes. Mm -hmm. but I'm not a squeaky wheel. And it does seem like sometimes a squeaky wheel gets the yeah. grief sometimes. And, and I am very much that person that won't, um, I'll just do my thing, and I'll just keep doing my thing, and I'll just keep going. We do need someone to go champion our stuff. And that, that's a huge part of it. But I'm also understanding how big this industry is. Yes, and, and that we have to. have to happen. And well, and, but we have to help. And that, I feel like that's what we're doing here. We well, have to kind of create. Oprah. We just have to, we have to create okay our energy. Yeah. We are enough. Yes. 
Yes. And and then keep creating yeah, and going. Too. And <laughs> according to my mother yesterday. <laughs> she told me. She's like, Darla, just calm down on this podcast. I'm like, I'm pretty calm. I'm like, this is me. Um, so, but no, I feel like I'm realizing, and this is and this is a little discouraging. I think that's why this week, um, more and more I'm realizing we have to carve out, we have to create, we have to be the momentum. We need to build up something. We need to help that along. And um, and so that to me is, I I don't know, not, it's, it's, it's encouraging, a little discouraging. It's even if you wrote the most amazing script. Yeah. Amazing. And even if an amazing actor or actress wants to be attached to it, or even a director, or it, it's still so hard. So, I, and this is where I get my comfort from. And John, my husband, will always say this. He's like, you're right. If nothing even goes beyond where things are now, you know that your writing is good. You know that your writing has resonated with people in the industry. You know that you've come so far, and um, and of course we're gonna keep plugging along, keep trying to get there. But yeah, mm-hmm. but it but it is it's enough to be yeah. who we are. Well, you know, and if you reach those moments where you just want to scream it out, for me, after doing this for so many years, I do. I just take a breath and mm-hmm. I just look around me, mm-hmm. and I look at the pictures on the wall of my family, yeah. and give blessings for the home that I'm in yeah. and the people who love me. And that's, that's enough. And that's enough to remind me. I am enough. It is. And yeah. sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And that's the part that can be really frustrating. Because, like, right now in the industry, there's so much. You know, we're, this, we're coming to at you right now, literally the day after the Netflix stock just went. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's so many things and so many factors that you have zero ideas of. And I'm not saying I know that either. But, um it's it's amazing like there's so many mergers going on and like the same execs that you might have pitched something to are not even there anymore and like right. things change so fast mm-hmm. you know yes. in that industry if you're you know looking at tv right now yeah. tv is really really tricky because sometimes we have to remember yeah. that there's a lot of things at work that we don't understand we don't we're, we don't have our finger on that because yeah. we're not in that yes. and right. even working writers out there don't have their finger on that post because it's it is such a different world from the creative writing world. So sometimes just know that, like, you know, there might be something happen that I don't understand what's happening, but right now I just need to be okay with the things that are in my yard, what I can yeah, control. The thing yeah. I can control. Yes. So I know we're getting close. We have about maybe five more minutes. What did you still want to talk about? Because I The Eyes of Tammy Faye. So this is a movie that all of us have watched. Um, I actually was able to catch it in theaters. I'm a huge Jessica Chastain fan, and like, I just, <laughs> I just, she's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. She's so good. yeah, she's created her own production studio, Franco Films. Um, she just recently won the, the 2022 Academy Award for Best Actress for her portrayal yeah. in the eyes of Tammy Faye. And so I've watched um, interviews with her, and she was inspired by a documentary also called The Eyes of Tammy Faye that came out in 2000, I believe. And she watched that because, you know, she's around our same age where we kind of grew up watching the Bakers yeah, on TV, yeah. right? And, and Tammy Faye was a larger-than-life person. And so Jessica was, you know, inspired to get to know Tammy Faye. And so she bought the rights to the documentary. And then she had all of these hours of film in addition to the documentary that she just studied. Mm-hmm. And she got to know who she was, you know, mm-hmm. based on film and there were sides of her that the public didn't know about. You know, the public didn't know her backstory and whatnot. And so Jessica felt really inspired to tell Tammy's um, story. And so, um, and yeah, she did. I, and she's an inspiration. And we, it's funny because we all have very different feelings about the movie. But you can't deny the fact that, you know, how Jessica was so driven, driven, and inspired. And it took years and years and years for yes. her to make this film. Yeah, and, and she, she didn't give up on the inspiration. Yeah, she knew she's inspired. So yeah. I think, um, to me, that was very inspiring. And and I will well, um, anyway, I did get glean a couple nuggets from that show that helped me understand Tammy Faye a little bit better. One of them, when she was a child, do you remember the scene when she's young, and her parents were ashamed of her because she was from the mayor. Uh, the what marriage of her mother's mm-hmm. previous marriage. Pre- so she had to stay at home from church. And like, yeah. So, it, okay, and, you're gonna, I'm gonna, everyone knows I'm 
crazy, I'm a little crazy. I could relate to her because I feel like the reason maybe Tammy Faye had this strong inner desire or feeling that she was going to make a difference. Um, okay, how do I explain this? I feel like she was so alone in that child, like meaning nobody was making her feel good about herself. She, where no one is building you up. Who do you turn to if you are a faith-based, or if you're if you're believe if you're taught to believe in God and Jesus? You turn to Jesus, and I feel like I can relate to that part of her in her childhood that she turned to an inner source to get her self-esteem, her affirmation, and maybe that drove her. And I felt that in my own childhood at times where I was like, okay, I'm a, it's just me and you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. help me. Yeah. Yeah. And and in, in this process of us doing this, oh my goodness, I, I can be your therapist. I can tell you all of our, because <laughs> I see all of our. Well, when we get together, it is therapy. <laughs> it is therapy. Yes, it really it's is. It's like I can be, um, I can see how much self-talk I give myself do you guys and you maybe don't notice it because you did all the editing but I'm like oh I'm like that crazy person that talks to myself it's always like dial it this dial. I'm like, I'm like no. but but I think that comes from points in my life where there wasn't anyone else to bounce things off so I, it was just me and, <laughs> and the Lord and um so I really resonated that part of Tammy Faye's life I felt like I could kind of I get that yes. yeah what I got out of it was this, you know, there's this woman who then becomes kind of a superstar, for lack of a better word, but she's always just wanting approval, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And that if someone, when she was younger or somewhere in her life that just said, you are good, you are enough, she just can, you know, and for some people, it, making herself and her life look more and more outrageous, mm -hmm. but if someone had just made her feel like... I approve of you, I love you, you know. Yeah, she's so, she's yeah. It's a really complicated story. You know, there's so many threads, and I think, you know, Jessica just did such a great job, you know, the acting, and you can see that this was a passion project. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, it was very complicated. And the storylines, you know, it's so easy to just blanket statement and be like, oh, Tammy <laughs> Faye, you know yeah. what I mean? But now you go, oh. That's what stories can do, yeah. you know, you think you have an idea in your head of, you know, like, for me writing women in the military, like, it's very difficult to write women in the military, because we're all very, very different kind yeah. of thing, but we have that shared, same shared experience, yeah. and so like for Tammy Faye, like, you have this, the shared experience of, you know, a Christian upbringing with all of our flaws kind yeah. of thing and just seeing a character and seeing her story unfold the way that it did. Um, you know, and oftentimes the best movies are the ones you go, oh. <laughs> so there was a lot of oh in there. But then you're kind but of it like, also hits the mark because we're talking about it after we've seen exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And we're we create a story that makes an impact on yes. somebody mm -hmm. where they talk about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you and you yeah. look at your own faith life. Yeah. yeah. Well and it has a lot and it says a lot about the time period, the era, the, the mm -hmm. social, I always tell my children when they're, when they are judging people by their actions, I said, you have to look at all of society. We as society let things happen. And, and, uh, so sometimes when we're being too harsh or too judgmental, it's like, Hey, took a look, took a look at the world at the time. Right. It has so much Context. to do. Yes. yes. Like, mm -hmm. uh, that was the thing back then. I mean, people wanted to give their money to something. Why yeah, <laughs> not right. just give it yeah. to the, yeah. to, what was the name of their P, PTL, PT, praise the Lord. Yes, foundation. And there were so many of those back then. I mean, and there still are, but, uh, so I feel like that, it was just it was a different time, different time. So, yes. no, I, it was, she did an amazing job. She yeah. really, really did at telling that story. Yes, yeah. Jessica did. Yes. Very and nice. I have a whole new perspective on Tammy Faye now. Yes. You know, like, and that was probably one of the story. goals that she wanted to achieve yeah. is to show that side of her that we didn't yeah. really know. Her soft side. Well. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like we took a little bit of the villain out. <laughs> well, yeah. and I do really believe she did understand Christ's true ministry. Yeah. Yeah, she, she did. did. And she just got caught up in it, it was wasn't like taking it was just here and being yeah. like, you know, she had the same thing happen that I did, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So yeah. She did have love for people. And um <laughs> so well, okay, we're pretty much out of time. Yeah. How do you guys feel? Anything we want to add on? I don't, I mean, just I think it was a great topic. Yeah. yeah. Stay, Stay inspired, everybody. 
you made it to the end of another episode. Thanks for dropping in. For more information on our podcasts and videos, be sure and check out our Facebook page with the same title, Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. If you like our videos, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.